We bought nearly two identical 182 Renault Clios with the intention of upgrading them with cheap parts compared to expensive parts. In this episode, we're going to test whether an upgraded intake is better than a stock one by doing some acceleration tests and putting it on the dyno. Rob's car already has the K-Tech air intake on it and we want to find out how the standard airbox compares to this. So we're going to do some acceleration tests and get it on the dyno. Then we're going to come back, fit this to my car and see what the difference is. We've got this snazzy race box which is going to be recording our times from our 0 to 60s and uh, let's get the first one, let's see how we go. And 60 there. Oh, I did pretty good on that one. Let's have a look. Don't use your phone whilst driving. Not a bad time. We'll tell you more at the end once Ryan has done his three tests and I've done my three, so that's the first one. I'll loop it round and let's get the other one. Test number two, let's try and get another one. That was a good one. Oh, I missed the gear, but I still hit 60, that's fine. That's all we need. Oh, that one wasn't bad. Right then, last one. I didn't even, uh, I don't know if that was better or worse. I tried letting it just go through the gear, but now nah, we'll see. Traction control is off, standard box, let's go. We've got some wheel spin on that last run, so let's see if we can do it a bit better. I'm hoping that gets near Rob's time because I have a feeling he's going to do a lot better than me. We'll see. We've arrived back from Surrey Rolling Road where, Brian, I made 173 brake horsepower. Pretty good. That is pretty good. What did you make? I got 183. Oh man. Yeah, well, when I've got an intake and a remap already he done to the car, you kind of expect a little bit more horsepower. Fair play. Now, We've done a 0 to 60 test. We did three runs and we got the average. Ryan, what was your average on yours? My average was 6.73 seconds, which is pretty respectable. That isn't bad, that isn't bad. Now, I got a 6.58. So better, but only 0.15 of a second off. Quick maths. Um, for me, it is. Mm. Now, we're very interested on what an intake does. So, Ryan, you better go do some tinkering. I better. Let's go. For those of you who aren't mechanically inclined, you get some instructions. They're easy enough to follow, and I suggest you have a go trying to fit it. Take air intake is now installed. Let me show you the first thing I noticed. You can hear that lovely induction growl. So let's get it on the dyno, see if it makes any power. Probably won't. We're back from the dyno, it's time to get the second runs in and I've got a bit of weight reduction going on. So let's do this first run, build up the revs and let's go. first run so that wasn't the best run but we're gonna try again have two more tries and get the average of both runs and see what happens second run let's go build the revs up third and final run let's go Great, 
great today. So you're gonna be surprised at the results of this, but that's to come. We've been to the dyno. I've done my final runs and my average time was a 7.28. Now, I'll just explain why that's a lot slower than the first time. A lot slower. The first run, I was a bar off on the petrol to try and account for my fat backside versus Rob's. It obviously made the difference. It, it made a little bit of difference because I did have a go in his car as well. And I did get 7.11. So Rob went faster. Oh. So 0.2 of a second if you're a skinny person versus a fat person. And the power, now this is the most surprising bit. Very Rob knows shocking. the result. Very shocking. I've gone from 172, not 173 as I mentioned earlier, and it is made, just give yourself a couple of seconds to think what it's made. Done. It's now 184.5 horsepower. That's a whopping gain of 12.5. It makes, that is a crazy difference. You couldn't believe that, no. time, could you? I was expecting maybe two or three horsepower because an intake normally doesn't do too much. That's exactly what I was Hold thinking. 12 horsepower. It's mad. I was at the dyno and the minute I saw that figure up, I was like, I don't believe this. Rob's going to be in total shock, as I'm sure most of you are. Mm. I was expecting two or three, next to nothing. But it's made a huge difference. And, sorry to interrupt, it's made a huge difference on the driving as well. A huge difference. I drove that car before it had an intake and it was gutless. After, it's given it more bottom end power and it's changed the car completely, which is surprising. And Very follow, surprising. following on from that, I didn't really notice the difference because I've fit it and then driven it. But when I changed from my car before to Rob's car, I'd feel that bottom end. But as Rob said, going from his to mine now and you feel that bottom end kick in. It's crazy. So I think we can safely say that 168 pound for a K-Tech air intake is worth the money all day long. 100%, 100%. And that's about an average price of 13 pound per horsepower. If you offered a Formula One team that, they're gonna bite your arm off for that. Exactly that. So I guess the moral of this episode is if you don't have a K-Tech air intake, no get promotion one. here, get one. Get one. Because it makes a difference. We're actually mind blown. Even though I was slower, is the driver's the issue and probably the tires and all the rest, but it makes more power guaranteed that and it now makes me think that i don't have a remap because we're now well he's actually Especially making it yeah you're making more horsepower than me now by 1.55 and Count. that means i need to get a cheap remap and he needs to get an expensive one so that Future. might be on our list if you have Maybe. any suggestions pop it in the comments let us know and obviously like share subscribe and in the next one we're going to be looking at our brakes Indeed. so stay tuned and we'll see you next time see you later Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys.